Welcome to All Classic Car, and here we are looking at original photographs of the Morris. The Morris cars of the 1920s through to the 1960s. And, to begin with, we have a head-on view of a classic Morris Minor. That is a Series 2. Um, these were built from about 1952-ish through to 1956. Looks like this one's got a, an interesting old roof rack on it. Several of the Morrises that feature in this video are thus equipped and there's a trio of interesting looking people there stood with their prized Morris. Okay, we're over in New Zealand now, thanks to Peter Ward for several of the photos that appear in this collection. And here we've got a magnificent six cylinder Morris Isis parked up in the car park. There's a few interesting cars dotted around as well, but what a lovely old Morris that is. I wonder if that's still around somewhere. Next up, we have a roadside wheel swap by the look of it, maybe a puncture. The car is a comparatively rare now Series 2 version of the Morris 8. You can always tell the Series 2 Morris 8 by the painted radiator surrounds as opposed to the chrome on the Series 1s. And what do we have here? The earlier Morris Minor. This is from the late 20s, early 1930s, and it appears to be a studio photograph, perhaps at a Guinness. Uh, facility somewhere, who knows, maybe at the factory, the ladies there holding some oversized bottles of Guinness, but what an interesting scene that is. Back to Morris Miners, and this is an old family photo of ours, VLG 987, that was a borrowed Morris Miner I believe, that's a Cheshire registered car, dating to mid-1955, and can anyone identify that lovely little caravan on the back of it please, I'd love to know what that is. Okay, another pre-war Morris here, JD4574, that's a London registered Morris 10-4. There's a lady stood up on the passenger seat there, peering out of the open sunroof. I wonder where this is, you can see Savoy written on the building in the background, perhaps the name of a hotel. And we are over in Australia for this particular photograph, I did include this in one of the 1950s original photos updates and uh, someone did identify this particular location. The car is a Morris Oxford MO. And we're back in this country now, SPK 91. That's a fairly rare Morris Mine MM, one of the highlight Morris MMs, a convertible version no less. And it appears the bonnet is open on the catch, so perhaps there were issues. Look at the old style parking meters as well. Another Morris 8 here, the Series 2 Morris 8, BG6190 is the registration of this particular two-door saloon, and there presumably it's the proud owner just stood on the right-hand side of his little Morris there from the late 1930s. And you may have seen this one before if you've been following the channel for a while, but I suggest pausing the video because there is so much going on in this photo, Morris's and Austin's and then the occasional Wolseley 1500 as well, but there's so much going on. I mean, what's that Morris Minor with the tinted windscreen there, just to the right of shot? So much there as well, worth having a closer look at that picture. Now we're back in the 1920s. I think the registration is OK9178, that's a Birmingham issue, circa 1923. There's a gentleman there, I think, studying his map, folded out over the car's bonnet there. Must be a little bit of a run out into the countryside, and how fantastic is that scene? And slightly later, we have 6LG, Morris 1100 Saloon, the standard four-door saloon. Uh, that registration is still around. Uh, it's now on the 2022 Mercedes, of all things. And it looks like it's still got the plastic seat covers as well, so maybe the car was brand new at the time of that photo. But not looking very unbrand new is GJ6058, a flat-nose Morris. That's circa 1930. The Morris uh, Cowley, I think that is, saloon. And it looks like they're preparing a bit of a brew up on the uh, running board there. We've got a bottle of milk and a thermos flask. So maybe a quick cup of tea at the side of the road. And maybe that's what was happening here. We have a Morris 8 Series E with a young girl sat on the front wing. And looking at the roof, I thought perhaps this was an open top car, but the shape of the rear window looks like a saloon. So I'm wondering if the roof of that particular car has been covered with some sort of vinyl material, perhaps. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Okay, side on view now of another flat nose Morris here, probably a Cowley going by the three stud wheel fixings. And uh, yeah, it's fully laid in this particular car. The side screens are in place, I'm guessing a slightly chilly day, but the roof is down nevertheless. And uh, yep, another jolly drive out to the countryside. Now, where is this? I don't know where this particular photo was taken, but we've got another Series 2 Morris 8, 
driving through a Ford, taking it very, very easily indeed. And there's another Morris 8 behind it as well. Yeah, I'd love to know where that is. If you recognise this particular scene, please pop a note in the comments. I think we're over in Australia for this particular view. And there's a gent here with his Morris Minor Highlight MM as well. This was the replacement for the Low Light MM before the Series 2 was introduced. This would still have had the side valve engine, the same engine as in the Morris 8 Series E. And there is a side-on view of the same car, a four-door Morris Minor Saloon, still on the original cross-ply tyres, which was standard fitment back then. Okay, back to pre-war years, we've got KR4386, that is a Kent registration that ran from 1929 through to 31. Now where is this? It looks a bit like a holiday camp. The building in the background looks very much like a prefab. And it's sat on those stones of which I can't quite remember the name of. Are they saddle stones, I think are they called? Anyway, thanks to Roger for this next photo of BND776. This was his Series 1 Morris 8 Saloon. What a cracker this is. This was Roger's first car. Uh, photographed here in 1956. That is a Manchester registered car from 1935. And we're back to Morris 8, the Series E. We've got a side-on view here of the two-door saloon. Quite a sleek looking car if you compare that to the contemporary Austin 8 and the Austin 10. The slope back grille and the uh, windscreen pillars on these cars do look quite modern. And the fared-in headlamps as well. Another of Peter's photos here, we're in this country. MRT132 is a Morris Oxford MO. Very, very similar looking at first glance to the Morris Minor, of course, but slightly bigger in all dimensions, and that had a 1500cc side valve engine in it. The car here being washed, looks like a circa 1930 Cowley again. Interesting, there's a little chap there. Busy cleaning his car, there's a bucket of water and a dog may be thinking about having a drink of some of the soapy water. A classic suburban scene, probably taken in the 1930s sometime. There's a lady and again we have the Morris Oxford MO, the larger brother to the good old Morris Minor. You can just see the curved top edge, the top rear edge of the front door frame. That is the giveaway that we're looking at the MO and not the Minor. Of course it's a slightly larger car overall. And in the background, we have the Hildenborough Hall. Uh, this is Frinton on Sea in Essex, and the car is a Series 1 Morris 8 ABL 273, is the registration number on that particular car. To more recent times, we've got a lovely estate here. This is the Morris Oxford Traveller on a J registration. And J, followed by all those numbers, tells us that that is a Jersey registered car, the island of Jersey. What a great thing that is. Roof bars as well. So no roof rack, but just a couple of very sturdy looking roof bars. Now, a late 30s Morris here. What do we have here? That's a Warwickshire registered car, circa 1936. I'm guessing this is a Morris 12, a Series 2 Morris 12. Great looking car. Nice lines, I always think these are. And I think that body shell was also shared with the contemporary Wolseleys. There's a front side on view of the same particular car. There's a gent there and the back end of his dog, which I think we saw in a previous photograph. But yeah, I really do like the shape of these late 30s Morrises. And we're back to that BMC service facility again, and it what looks to be almost like a brand new Morris Minor Traveller there. You can still see chalk marks under the rear wheel arch, and clearly the gent at the front, I'm assuming, He's given it a bit of a lubrication, greasing the joints perhaps, something like that. But yeah, it looks like a brand new car. And there's a, another rear three-quarter view of the same car. There's a couple of smartly dressed gents there watching on. Yeah, really, really interesting scene. I'd love to know where this is. If you know, please pop a note in the comments. It's always good to read your thoughts about the cars that feature in these videos on the old classic car channel. Now, we are much, much earlier in date here. And the side view of a two-door, probably with dicky seat, Morris Cowley. Great looking car that is. These sold in huge numbers at the time. I wonder what that building is in the background. I do like those window frames. I always think they look great on old buildings in the 20s and 30s. There's another very similar car, this time with the rear dicky seat, or rumble seat, as Americans call it, uh, in, in use there. Three people in the back. 
and two in the front. So well piled in there and a lovely BP two gallon petrol can on the running board and a fairly extensive toolkit as well. Okay, but up to the mid 1950s now, we've got a Morris Cowley. I think this is a 1500, the Series 3, with the more pronounced scallops on the top of the bonnet. You can just about see those. These were introduced in 1956 and only built for a couple of years until about 1958. We're back with the Morris 8, the good old Series E. These were such a popular car back at the time. And uh, yeah, a couple here with their lovely old car. Look at that, it's got some extra catches on the front uh, bonnet there. Normally you would have what they call budget locks opened with a T-handle, but this has got those up and over clips as well for added security. Now even though this is in fairly terrible condition, this is one of my favourite photos in the entire collection. The sepia view of a circa 1924 Morris Cowley Tora, the bullnose Morris. What a great old scene that is. 100 years old by next year, so yeah, what an incredible sight. Okay, we've got KVG336 now, a Norwich registered, circa 1957, 58, something like that. Morris Minor on a continental road trip, well laden, roof rack, much stuff packaged on the roof as well. And it's got one of those Perspex sun visors as well. And there's another view of the same trusty Morris. What's the car parked alongside, I wonder? Is that a little Fiat perhaps? white wall tyres. You don't see those very often on Morris's either. That's quite unusual. I wonder if maybe they had a tyre fitted while they were somewhere on the continent because you don't tend to see cars here all that often with the white wall tyres. There's another view of the same car clearly on a campsite somewhere in Europe I think. The buildings in the background might give us a bit of a clue as to where these particular photographs were taken. Uh, answers on a postcard please. Oh, lovely. I do like some of these old photos, even though some of these photos aren't in great condition. I just think they really, really capture the era so well. GK1657, Little Morris Miner, one of the pre-war Morris Miners. That's a 1930 registration, registered somewhere in the London area, apparently. And going back a little bit further in time, we've got a side-on view of a lovely bullnose cowley here. Look at that Shell Motor Spirit can on the running board there. And you can see the position of the spare wheel means that the front passenger, or the driver rather, doesn't actually have a door to open. They have to slide in from the passenger side. And next up we have WV7771, a Morris 10-4 saloon. And look at the shine on that, the reflection of the lady there in the door and in the windows in fact this is a highly polished beautifully looked after example i wonder what happened to that i wonder if it survived the war now we are back at bmc and this is one of several photos i've got of a pre-production morris cowley uh, morris oxford rather the mo oxford and if you compare this under bonnet view with cars that actually made it into production there are some differences different things different locations so this was a bit of a prototype i think and we're back to Bullnoses and a regular four-door, four-seat Bullnose Morris Cowley Tourer there. Lovely looking car. Perfect for a little run out into the countryside on a Sunday afternoon, perhaps. Now I wonder where we are for this particular scene. There's a very, very grubby Morris there in front of those two horses. It looks like a Morris 10 Series M. It's a post-war example. They have a curvier radiator shell compared to the Series M's that were produced just before the outbreak of World War II. We'll see examples of those later. Okay, Morris Mine here, left-hand drive Moggy 1000. And I think that is a Libyan registration number. And if you look at that sticker in the rear window, it says Morris Miner makes more of your petrol. Uh, in English, funnily enough, but the car looking at that number plate is very definitely not in England. And there is a side-on view of the same car. Like I say, I did research this many years ago and I've got a feeling this was registered in Libya somewhere. But if that's wrong, please correct me in the comments. Okay, next up in this collection of Morris photographs, we've got a slightly grainy, but interesting nonetheless, photograph of a parked up flat nose Morris there. It's a Tora with the roof up and you can see the side screens in place and a couple there just stood in the road. Very quiet, unmade road surface as many of the roads were in the 1920s and the 1930s. Now we're looking at a Series E Tora here 
I'm going by that straight line on the top of the door. It doesn't dip down for the driver's elbow. I think we are in Australia, and I think that is an Australian bodied example of the Morris 8 Series E, rather than the regular Series E tours that we have here in the UK. And there's another view of the same car, and again you can see the straight top of the door. And if you compare that to the Series E tours that we have here in the UK, Typically they have a big cutout on the top edge, which makes me think this is a locally bodied car, which is something that happened quite regularly with cars that were shipped from the UK over to Australia. No doubts about this one, we have a 1965 C-plate Morris 1100 saloon, a four-door saloon with its two near side doors open. I wonder why they're open, maybe just to cool it off a little bit before I drive out. Nice cottage in the background as well, but no details. Uh, are recorded sadly for that scene. Now what are we looking at here? I'm guessing this may be an Oxford or something like that. There's a very distinctive moulding in the bodywork underneath the rear side window there near where the people are looking out. So that may help identify this one. I'm assuming it's sort of 1934, 1935, something like that. But if you can tell me what that is, please do so. And we are looking at a street scene here outside S Redfern and Co Limited. And we've got a lovely little moggy miner there. There's also an Austin Cambridge, and you can just see part of a Morris Miner on the bottom left of the shot as well. Another family scene here. So many of these photographs were of families heading out for the day in their prized motor car. The introduction of affordable motoring by the Austin 7 and the various Morrises really did open up the open road to so many more families than had been the case before. Look at this group here. All looking pretty chuffed to be going out in their car. Now, Stuart and Arden Limited, Morris Cars, a wonderful photograph, a nighttime photograph of the Stuart and Arden Morris dealership. And you can see various Morris cars peering out of the illuminated showroom there. What a great scene that is. Fantastic. Another of Peter's great shots taken in New Zealand. I think this was in the 1970s. And we've got a pretty rare now, low light Morris Minor MM Saloon looking a little bit dejected as if maybe it had been left there for quite some time. I wonder what the story is with that particular car. Did anyone rescue it, I wonder? There's a nice one, OY2128, the registration that tells us this car was registered in London about 1930 or 1931. Uh, I think it's probably a Morris Major 6, the 1.8 litre car with a straight 6 engine, but again, please let me know in the comments. And It's got a Shell petrol can on the running board. And there's a nice one, thanks to Alan for sending this one over. Not just a normal Morris Miner, this is a supercharged Morris Miner. Um, it's one of the late MMs, you can tell that by the different strip in the middle of the bonnet. Uh, it's a cheese grater grill car, of course, like the early Series 2s were also like that, but this has got a supercharger on its engine. I'm assuming this is during the war with those headlamp masks fitted to this particular Series E, EVO414 as a registration. But yeah, lovely run out here, presumably on rationed fuel, because fuel was far from easy to get hold of during the war and indeed after the war. Now we've got a really nice example of the two-door Morris 8 Series 2. You can see it's got one of those radiator blinds on the front partially rolled down, which suggests that this photo, this suburbia scene, it was probably captured on film sometime during the winter or maybe late autumn, that kind of time. We don't know where this one is either, but the car on the left is a Morris Oxford, of course, one of the Farina designed Morris Oxfords, a 1622cc car. And in the background, we've got an MG 1100, 1967, and there's another ADO 16 in front of that, and other cars stretching away into the distance. And there's a young lad here, proud to be sat behind the wheel of a Morris Minor Series 2 Traveller. Not a car that you see all that often now. Okay, continuing this look into lovely old Morris photographs, we've got KP8833. Now this particular Morris, probably a Cowley, appears to be missing its headlamps. I'm not quite sure why that would be the case. Uh, the spare wheel on the running board there, you can just see on the right, also appears to be missing most of its tread as well, but that wasn't unusual in the 1930s. Now here's a rarity, the Traveller version of the Morris Oxford MO. We've got two photographs of this particular car, I think this was in Australia somewhere, but this was a very, very rare sight. I don't think I've ever seen one of these at any of the shows that we've been to, it's a seriously rare car now. There's a rear three-quarter view of the same car with roof rack, well-laden roof rack, and a dog there guarding it. 
But what a rare car that is. Bigger version, of course, of the Morris Minor Traveller. Do you own one of these? Did you ever own one of these? It'd be nice to hear from an owner or a former owner of one of these cars. I've got two classic Morrises here now, BPT 618. That looks like a Morris 12 and possibly a 10, but probably a Morris 12 Series 2 and a Morris 8 Series 1 alongside that. And I wonder what that dismantled car is that you can just see peering out of the garage. Is that under the Morris, I wonder? OK, there's a gentleman here, the dog on the bonnet of another pre-war, late pre-war Morris, JP3625. That's a Morris 10 Series M. And it's got the square shaped grille that I was talking about before of the pre-war 10Ms. The post-war cars had a much curvier radiator surround. OK, back to the post-war years, late 40s, early 1950s. Another example of the Ford or Morris Oxford MO here. Another cracker little car here. This is the Morris Minor. This is the early 1930s Morris Minor saloon. Very similar to a car that we ran uh, several years ago now. We had it about 10 years ago, I suppose. Ours was a 1934. I'm guessing this is a year or two older than that. But what a great scene that is. And little and large here. We've got a mighty 1965 Ford, American Ford, parked alongside the Morris Mini Minor. Because, of course, when the Mini first came out, they were available as the Morris or the Austin. It was called the Austin 7 originally, or the Morris Mini Minor, depending on your preferences. OK, we've got photos now of UJ1251. That's a Shropshire registration number, and this is quite a rare car. It looks like a Morris Minor, but this is actually the, the Family 8. I think it's called the four-door version, a stretched slightly version of the Morris Minor, shortly produced before the uh, Morris 8 came along. And there's a side-on view of the same car, people on board, ready for a nice trip out in their Morris. But yeah, these are quite rare because most Morris Minor saloons of the late 20s and early 30s were just the regular two-door saloons or the open cars. You don't see many of these Family 8s around. There's another view of the same car parked at the side of the road. The first of these three photos was shown on the Menai Bridge over in North Wales, Anglesey. So I'm wondering if that's why this particular photo was taken as well. I guess we will never know, but what a lovely scene that is. And we are over to South Africa now, and we have a late 50s or early 1960s Morris Minor pressing on at speed here in a competitive event somewhere. I've got quite a few photographs of this particular meeting, but yeah, this was the only shot that I've got of a Morris, so makes it into this particular collection. Okay, FZ7720, an Irish registered Morris 8 Series E Tourer. And you can just about see what I was talking about, about the door line, compared to that earlier pale colour car that we saw before, which I think was in Australia. The door line cuts away to give the driver and the passenger, in fact, a little bit more elbow space. And there's a rear view of the same car. Happy couple there, ready for a drive out in their dinky little Morris. Back to Peter again, and when he was over in New Zealand, he photographed this cracking example of the 1950s Morris Oxford before they switched to the Farina design car. These were the cars that were produced at that particular time. And lovely, lovely to see that. Nice to see a colour photo as well. And we are in a hotel, I think, looking out of the entrance, and there are two Morrises for our delectation there, a circa 1955 Oxford Series 2 part on the front there facing the sea and driving past what looks to be one of the MCV vans with added windows, the Cowley or Oxford based vans also of the 1950s. Okay, thanks to Peter for the following two photographs. Now here we have his 1965 Morris 1100 and even the original advert that he bought it from. How cool is that? 1100 sedan, 1965, perfect mechanicals and new tyres. What a great shot that is. And this is his replacement car, the 1100S. This car dated to 1969. It had the 1275cc A-series engine fitted, the transverse A-series engine, uh, albeit on a single carburetor, where of course Mini Coopers and things had the twin carburetor 1275 setup. But these may do with just a single carb. Okay, here's a car you don't see too often now, JHX887. That is a circa 1938 London registered 12.4. 
so the bigger brother to the Morris 8 and the Morris 10 in fact. So it's got many similarities, the family resemblance is clear, but yeah, you don't see many of those. And look at this, HCL228 on a continental road trip, this particular Morris Minor. And that looks like a Fiat Saluton parked alongside. So yeah, we've got some interesting stuff there. And is that a 4CV just next to the Fiat? It certainly looks a bit like one. And there we go again. Also, the Morris Minor looks like he's about to eat a Renault 4CV. So yes, I think I'm sure that photo was carefully positioned to make it look that way. But yeah, what a great scene that is. And there's a chap here topping up the water in his slightly tired looking pre-war Morris Minor. Not quite sure what the scene is here. There's a kettle on the floor and the bumper is hanging off at a drunken angle. Uh, the, uh, the illumination doesn't look particularly factory either, so I'm not sure if this was a car that was being done up or maybe being cut down into a special, who knows. Right, showroom view now of another brand new Morris. This is a Morris Mini Miner. Uh, you can see the Morris grille and the badge on the front there and indeed the little for sale thing on the top, the little sign on the top of the car there. In the background we've got the Austin A55 Cambridge. And we're back to Morris 8s here, and another example of the Morris 8 Series 1, identifiable by that chrome radiator surround and these spoked wheels, both of which were things that disappeared and were replaced and changed for the later Series 2. Bit of motorsport, bit of club motorsport action here, and we have a Morris Minor being pressed hard around this particular course. Not quite sure where this is. It's got a bit of a vibe of an old airfield to it. So I've got a feeling this particular auto test is uh, yeah, probably over a weekend at an airfield somewhere. Now I'm not quite sure what's going on here. We've got PK8154 there. So sort of late 20s, early 1930s, flat nose Morris Tour. But I wonder what's going on in this scene. I'm not quite sure. I've, I've had this photo for quite a few years and I've looked into it every now and again. But I'm still none the wiser. Okay, 184 AUH, another wonderful example of a late 1950s Moggy Thousand, a four-door saloon. That looks to be a lovely little car, still on cross-ply tyres as well. And what do we have here? DLG 129 is the registration number, and it's either Morris 10 or a 12, Series 2. Series 2's had these chrome radiator surrounds, the Series 3's had a painted surround but yeah this chap looks really happy to be with his prize Morris and again as with so many of these cars in lovely condition really beautifully turned out and polished condition people were really invested in looking after their cars back in those days what a great old car that is Two for the price of one here, two Morris Minor saloons parked alongside each other. The one on the left with a very long radio aerial on the front wing. And what's the car over on the left? It looks a bit roots-like, I'm guessing maybe a Humber Hawk, or is it the smaller Minx? I'm sure one of you will know for sure. But yeah, great pair of old Morrises. And how about this for a scene? This is a fantastic, quite a large photograph that's been specially printed. A uh, great scene of two ladies there. And a cheeky looking chap on the right hand side there and their flat nose Morris. What a great scene that is. Roof is raised and the, the tray on the back. The luggage rack is well laden. There's a photo of the same car and you can see more clearly some very, very droopy headlights. I'm not quite sure why the headlights have been angled so low like that. The side light on the off offside front wing there is pointing up into the heavens and the headlights are both pointing down. So I'm not quite sure what's happening there. Look at those uh, running boards, very well laden indeed. Three people now, and MGO 464, another Series E. That is an Oxford registered car, circa 1947. So this is a post-war example of the Series E. Of course, this model came out in the pre-war years, then production was halted for the duration of the war, and went back into production following World War II. And another example of a what appears to be a pretty much a brand new, I would guess, Morris Mini Miner here, 8953. KD is the registration number. It's possibly not brand new, but it's not far off. It's certainly in really, really good condition, and it's a base model car. So it's got no bumper overriders, no, no wheel trims on the wheels. Uh, looks like it's got the fixed rear side windows as well. 
whereas the Deluxe would have had the opening rear side windows and bumper overriders and a few little mod cons and luxuries like that. But yeah, looks to be in fantastic condition, that one. Another late 30s saloon here, and this is another example of the Morris 10, the Series M. And this is a post-war example, I believe. I think the uh, trims down the side of the bonnet did vary depending on whether you're looking at a pre-war or post-war car and obviously the grills did as well but we can't see that here and there is a rear view of ENR443 which could possibly be the same car that we saw in the previous photograph um, another example of fantastic caravanning life in the 1950s there and on the left we have a prefect a Ford prefect E493A saloon Back to suburbia, and we have a lovely Morris 8 here, little Series 1 Tour. Very, very nice little car. Roof raised, more often than not you see the, the roof down, so it's good to see one of these period photographs with the roof in the raised position. Now, thanks to Barry for this particular photo, this was his father's car, and this was sold new to Lagos in Nigeria, circa 1953. Look at that old BMC rosette in the window there, proudly displaying the British Motor Corporation's logo. Fantastic. Two photos now of a great Morris Minor that was used on a trip to France. And here it is being loaded aboard the Silver City Air Ferry, the magnificent Bristol freighter. Fantastic. See, I love the guy on the roof there, just cleaning the windscreens for the, for the pilot and the co-pilot. What a great scene that is. That's definitely one of my favourite photographs. And here is the same Morris Minor parked outside a delightful shell garage. Look at those petrol pumps. The shape of those petrol pumps is very different to the pumps that we tend to get here in the UK. Um, some fantastic shell globes as well. So what a great scene that is. Now, thanks to Steve for this one. This is a family photo and the car ADX606. That's a pretty rare now, Morris 6. If you look at the main body shell, you can see it's based on that of the Oxford demo, but these had a longer nose, different style front end to accommodate a six cylinder engine. But that is quite a rare car now. The family here proudly sat inside their two door Morris 8 Series 1, Series 1, because we can see the spoked wheel there at the back open windscreen as well so it looks like a nice summer's day and the dog appears to be enjoying his ride in the front passenger side as well peering out of the windscreen there talking of drives out on a nice day we've got two pictures here of a couple and their dog and a morris 8 series 1 tourer with the roof folded flat you don't often see that in these old photographs more often than not the, the windscreens are raised just to give you a bit of wind protection but in this case they've gone full-on sporty mode Here's a lady sat astride the bonnet of YW6870. I'm not quite sure what the stick is for, perhaps we'd better not ask. But yeah, nice example of a 1930-ish or thereabouts Morris Saloon. Another side view here to determine what we're looking at. And this is a Series M, Morris 10 Series M. And it is one of the pre-war cars again. Like I say, they had a slightly squarer radiator grille. The top of the grille is more angular compared to the post-war cars. There were other differences as well. The side of the bonnet was different as well. Okay, back to New Zealand. Thanks to Peter again. And we've got a snapshot of a matching pair, in fact, of Morris Miners in the background. We've got a variety of other cars, including its BMC rival, the Austin A30. Clearly a bit of work being going on on the front end of there, but I wonder if any of those cars survive. Next up, another pre-war car, and for a change, we've got a four-door example of the Morris 8 Series 1. We've seen quite a few tours and two-door cars, but photos of four-door cars don't seem to be as common for some reason. Maybe they didn't sell as well. If you know your Morrises, maybe let me know how many were built of the twos and the four-doors. Okay, bigger Morris now, OD2335. I think this is the Morris Major 6, the saloon. Very smart saloon indeed, really nice car, and a lady dressed immaculately, ready for the drive out in their lovely old Morris. But if you know any more about this particular car and can confirm the model, please let me know. And here we've got a very sad looking Morris that uh, met something solid while on a trip to Spain. It's a British registered car, so clearly it had been driven over there, perhaps went over on the ferry, something like that. But yeah, it met a bit of a sticky wicket. Uh, I'm not quite sure what's going on. There are a couple of people sat in the background as well. Okay, DEH249. We've got two photos now of this particular Morris Saloon. I think it's a 10-4 Series 2. Looks, the paintwork looks quite matte. 
So I wonder if it was on military use perhaps. Certainly the chrome looks a bit dull on it and we've got some, there's a gent there in his military gear. And <laughs> we have another photo of the same car, the same Morris, albeit this time it appears to be parked in a canal for some particular reason. Uh, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Maybe it was a Ford in the road that was more flooded than they imagined. Uh, <laughs> answers on the postcard again for that one. But yeah, what a great picture that is. Now, I've not included much in the way of commercial vehicles, but of course Morris produced all manner of vans and lorries back in the day. But this is quite a rarity. This is the Morris Series Y van. Uh, photos of the Z vans turn up quite often, but this is the slightly larger Y van with added rear side windows and curtains. There's a young lady here posed proudly with an immaculate look at the paintwork and the chrome gleaming on this particular Morris 8 Tourer. What a bobby dazzler that is, and it's got a BMC Drivers Club badge on the grill as well, on the radiator rather, um, which is uh, yeah, it's just great to see. And we've got two photographs here of RJ0114. It's a British registered, UK registered car, albeit left hand drive, which is a bit weird, and clearly it's had a bit of an impact with something. Um, yeah, and it's looking a bit sorry for itself. It's a late MM, the Highlight MM, shortly before the Series 2 was introduced. And there's a side view of the same car, and it's got a long body moulding. Um, so if you look at the moulding that runs under the back of the roof there, as it extends round to the rear side window, it actually goes slightly past the gutter. And that's not the case on all two-door cars. Quite why some of the cars had that extra moulding there, I'm not quite sure. But yeah, very interesting pair of photos. Now, thanks to Doug for this wonderful colourised photo here. The car is a circa 1930 Morris Minor. The photo was taken in 1937. That's Doug's aunt in the photograph with his father's first car. So what a great scene that is. What a lovely photograph that is. Thanks to Doug for that one. Now we are in London, 1954, during a traffic survey. Many, many photographs were taken. And just on the right hand side there, we've got the two seater version of the pre-war Morris Minor, just like the car that we had until not very long ago. And very sort of classic vehicles in view there as well. Lovely stuff. And quite a large Morris here by comparison. JM528 is the registration. I think, I think, this is a Morris Isis 6, circa 1931 or there or thereabouts. And in the background is Lowther Castle. Um, but yeah, if you can confirm or add any more details on this particular car, please do so. Okay, side on view now, which makes it a little bit harder to identify, but I think we're probably looking at a 14.6 Series 2. The date would be about 1937, and as I've said before, this era of car, they lent their body shells to contemporary Wolseleys as well. So, yeah, different front ends, but the main body shell was shared, I believe. And a colour slide now, scanned of a late 1950s, circa 1960, there or thereabouts, Moggy Saloon, four-door, Morris Mine 1000. wonder where that was. Still plenty of these original Morris photos to come, and here's one of the earliest to feature. We've got CD6639. That is a circa 1922 or early 23 Morris Cowley Tourer. What a fantastic car that is. You think all bullnoses are the same, but look at the style of the grille on that one. That is very different compared to later bullnoses of the mid-20s. And here's a chap here with his Series 2, I think, two-door Morris Minor. And again, it's got that long body moulding. It's standing forwards of the bottom of the gutter. Why that was the case, why some cars had that and some didn't, I'll probably never know. But again, if you know, please let me know. Okay, BG9330 next. We've got a couple of photos of this particular Series E. That is a Birkenhead registered car, so that's where this car spent its early years, circa 1947. So it's a post-war two-door car. Uh, these were introduced actually in 1938. There's another rear view of the same car during a roadside picnic. They were introduced in 38 and built right the way through to 48 with a pause for the war, of course. And then in 1948, the Morris Minor came along to replace it with the same engine, but a very different car. 29 brake horsepower, four cylinder side valve engine. Now, thanks to Steve for this particular shot. Um, clearly, someone got it a little bit wrong while behind the wheel of their four door Morris 1100 saloon. Yes. Uh, I wonder if that was straight and outable or whether that was the end of the road for this particular Morris. Clearly the windscreen smashed, the front end's looking pretty bad as well. Okay, anyway, back to happier scenes and we've got a lovely picnicking scene here. We've got a flat nose Morris on the left and on the right, slightly fuzzy, but there's enough there to make out that that is a vintage Jowett. You can just see the Jowett script 
in the middle of the radiator there. Up, up and away, this looks like a, maybe a 10-4 or a 12-4 again of the late 1930s. I'm not quite sure of the location, we've got some railway carriages in the background, so I'm guessing this may be, uh, I'm not quite sure, maybe at the dock somewhere possibly, I'm not quite sure. But of course in the days before roll-on and roll-off ferries, that's how you got a car onto a ferry. Right, the car on the right, which wasn't the subject of this photograph, is of course a Morris Oxford. You can tell it's the Morris rather than the Austin Cambridge because it's got that thin bright strip that runs along the top of the sill. The Austin Cambridge didn't have that. And the car, uh, the subject of the photograph, is an 1897 Daimler. Right, two people here and their lovely Series 2 Morris 8 Tudor Saloon. Again, the Series 2s didn't have the spoke wheels. They had these so-called easy clean steel wheels that you can see here. And I guess they were a lot easier to keep on top of compared to spoked wheels. And they did look a bit more modern as well. Okay, thanks to Cyril now for this fantastic old family photo of his. And the car, 1077H, a very distinctive registration. That's a London series, about 1953. And it's on a camping trip somewhere. We've got quite a few tents there. We've got the Morris with roof rack, of course, as well. Right, now PJ9453. I think this is a Morris Major, the Morris Major 6. So it's a four-door Tora version, which is quite swish. And then, yeah, there's a gent sat on the bonnet, slowly bending the top of the bonnet, I would imagine, because I can't imagine it would be too happy with someone sat on there, but never mind. Okay, another example of the Morris 6, the MO base car, and again, from this side view, you can really see how that body shell is basically the same as the Morris Oxford, um, albeit with a much longer front to accommodate the larger engine. I'm not quite sure where this idyllic scene is, but yeah, it looks very, very civilised. Okay, now we've got another example of the flat nose Cowley Tora, circa 1930 or thereabouts. And you can always tell these because they've got the horn that pokes through the little panel below the windscreen there. It's just like a little wooden piece and the horn sticks through there. So that's just a, something to look out for on these cars. Thanks to Graham now for this photo. A roadside picnic stop. There's his sister holding up a jar of pickle, I think he said. So yeah, what a great scene that is. And this would have been such a common sight on the roads across the UK in the 1950s. Roadside picnics, a quick brew up and then carry on on your journey. Another fantastic saloon here, one of the flat nose saloons, another a Cowley or possibly in Oxford looking at the number of wheel studs that we can see there. Um, but also on the left another wonderful vintage car, of course it's an Austin 7 Chummy and that's quite an early one with the headlights mounted on the scuttle below the screen. Another side on view of a late 30s Morris, now what do we have here? This I think is probably a 12.4, they have uh, different bonnet strips compared to the 10s. And also the door handle position was slightly different. On the 10 M's, the door handle was above the beading that runs along the side of the door. VKG 206 is next. Another good old late 1950s or 1960-ish Morris Minor, of course. What a great car that is. There's a Hilma Minx on the right-hand side. And what's the car to the left? Is that another example of the Morris 8, perhaps? The bumper and the front wing looks a bit Morris 8-ish. And there's an Odeon Cinema in the background as well. And here's another fantastic view of a Morris 8 Tora, Morris 8 Series 1 Tora, CLN 673 is a registration on this particular car. It's a four-door Tora, so you can fit the family in, and yeah, you wouldn't be going anywhere very quickly, but it would get you anywhere, given enough time. Next up, head-on view, two ladies, and a lofty, angular Morris Saloon PK5790. That car started out life in Surrey. Somewhere around late 1928 or early 1929, I think. Yeah, another great photograph. And how about this one? A side-on view now of a two-door Morris Minor. It's a Series 2. And the car on the left in the background is, what is that, an Austin 8 or a 10? Probably the 10 with the larger headlamps, I would have thought. What a great scene this is. Um, the Little Morris Saloon, the Little Morris 8, is almost an afterthought, but look at those fantastic roadside pumps there. What a great scene that must have been. I so wish some of these photographs were in colour. Four great old pumps, and all with illuminated globes on the top, different shapes as well. Fantastic. Now we're back to the early cars here. We've got a Cowley two-door, two-seater with dicky seat, Tora. But what is the car in the background? Do you know what that car is? Is there enough there to identify it, I wonder? I'm sure some of you sleuths out there 
will be able to pin an ID on that particular car. And there's a good one, RKB923. This is one of several old uh, slides that I've scanned recently. That's a Liverpool registered car, circa 1953. It's a Series 2 803 Tora with a lot of the chrome work actually painted out. Look at the bumper, it's painted white. Uh, around the front quarter lights are painted white as well. Now, here's a lady, a faithful dog, some heather, and a post-war Morris 10M. This is the curvier grille that I keep referring to, so it tells us that this is a post-war car. But yeah, great scenes, in immaculate condition, with an RAC badge as well. And here's a chap, head-on view of another Morris Minor saloon, of course. I'm sure many of you watching this particular video will have owned Moggy saloons just like this. Let me know in the comments what you think of these old Moggies. If you like this kind of video, please like and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already subscribed, that's always really appreciated. There are loads of videos like this on the channel now. Okay, CVE8 is the next car to feature. Morris 8 Series 2 Tora. That's a Cambridgeshire registered car. Registered circa February or March 1938. And there's a chap in military gear stood alongside it, and it's got a headlamp mask as well, so I'm guessing that's a wartime photo. Thanks to Steve for this one, XFC95 is the car, and that is a 1955 Oxford area registered Morris Minor Saloon. But what, pray, is the caravan in the background? I'd love to know what that is, what a great scene that is. No tow bar on the Morris, so clearly it didn't actually tow the caravan. Now... I think these next two photographs were taken in Sweden of all places. It's a British registered car. Uh, it's a four-door Morris 10-4 saloon, if you're keeping tabs on this particular kind of thing. But yeah, as I've said before, before the days of roll-on, roll-off ferries, this is how you would get a vehicle on and off the ferry. And there it is either being prepared for lifting or after having been dropped back onto the quayside. But yeah. Uh, I can imagine there were many, many accidents while hauling cars on and off of ships that way because a, a bit of a side wind and that could get quite exciting, I would have thought. And look at this idyllic, another roadside picnic. I think I might have to recreate one of these scenes one day. One of the little Series E there. Still with its original headlamps, you could get conversions to convert them to your regular 7-inch uh, Lucas headlamps. But all the Series E's in this particular collection have got the original slopey headlights. Two photos now of a Morris Minor Traveller. Uh, there's a young lad sat behind the wheel and this one has been fitted with a period roof rack. So clearly the capacious load bay of the Morris Minor Traveller wasn't enough for whatever the family had planned with their little Morris. But yeah, it looks to be in really good condition. There's a lady sat behind the wheel of the same car, um, albeit with no roof rack this time. SGG is the registration series for this particular car and it dates to the late 1950s. You can see it's still got the clap hand wipers of the split window cars, um, but although by this time they had the one piece windscreen. Another lovely old photo, technically not the best photo in the world, but so atmospheric. And we've got a flat rad Morris Cowley Tora, the four door, four seat Tora with its roof raised and rear side screens in place. Quite a grubby looking, well used car, but that's how cars used to look back in the day. And another Tora here, this is a bullnose, so mid-1920s, this particular example. And you can see it's got one of those extra screens to give the rear seat passengers a bit of protection from the wind. These were called Oster screens, A-U-S-T-E-R. And uh, yes, they were very, very useful indeed. And this could possibly be the same car again, albeit on a different location, but what a wonderful scene that is. The fashions, the clothes, everyone looks happy, having a nice bite to eat at the side of the road somewhere. What a great, great scene that is. And there's a Shell Motor Spirit can on the running board as well. Fantastic. And much more recent, we have an early 1960s Morris Oxford, one of the Farina design cars that had the big B-series engine of 1622cc by this point in time. Quite a distinctive registration number on this one as well. The original cross-ply tyres, and I'm just assuming the car was almost new at that point. Now we're at Breen Sands, a Pontins holiday camp and a parade of cars headed by this Morris 8 Series 1 Tourer. Festooned and adorned with all manner of things, the Union flags, people sat in the back. What's the car behind it? Yeah, interesting scene. And here we go. Now we've got another low light, quite a rare photo of a low light Morris Minor Tourer. That is definitely a rare car. The Morris Minor, the low light came out in 1948. And this is probably not a lot later than that, maybe about 1950 or thereabouts. But yeah, quite rare to see a nice old photo of a Tora. 
Then WW9204 is next, another flat nose saloon. These saloons were very square um, compared to Austin's of the day. The Morrises were really boxy, quite boxy lines, and they're probably not for everyone now, to be honest. They are quite a square looking car. But anything but square is this cracking little 1964 example of the Morris badged Mini Miner on uh, someone's wedding day. I wonder where this was, and they can even see a little mini estate in the background of the second photo there. All sorts of messages scrawled all over the car. Now this is another lovely photograph here, P0, PO rather, 882. That's a Sussex registered car, about 1934. I think it's a Morris Oxford, the 16 horsepower car. But what a magnificent car that is, and there's a Vauxhall just on the right hand side there about to drive past. But yeah, that Morris is a very fine looking car indeed. And how about this 632 DXO? Here's the registration. And it's a late 50s, or about 1960, clap hand wiper, Morris Minor Traveller, complete with tent and washing hanging up on the line. So a bit of everything there, but yeah, what a great camping scene that is from the 1960s. Now, thanks to Tony for this one. I'm not sure where this photo was taken, um, but yeah, two young ladies and a Morris Oxford MO. Great looking car, that is RAC badge, and you can just see the little Morris badge in the middle of the bumper there, which covered the starter handle hole. But yeah, lovely looking car. Side valve engine, about 1500cc. Okay, three photos now, thanks to Steve for these. This is Ernest Parker's first car, a little pre war Morris Minor. Ernest was Steve's grandfather, so thanks to Steve for sending these over. And we've got a suburban scene here with his little Morris Minor saloon. And here we go with a slightly later Morris Minor Saloon, I'm guessing, what, about 1933, something like that. We had a 34, but I think this is probably a year or so before that, WD8478. But yeah, so clearly the earlier Morris Minor was replaced with this one, which was a few years newer. And then his third car, Ernest's third car, was this GFC 541, a Series E Tourer. And in the background is Dolphin Inn, which with a bit of sleuthing I've identified as being on the seafront at Combe Martin, or Coombe Martin, in Ilfra Coombe, on the A399. So if you look that up on Google Maps, you'll see that street scene as it is today. Now, thanks to Laurie. So many people have kindly sent over photos which have appeared in these collections. So thanks to Laurie Pryor for this one. Head-on view of XRO113. Their family series 2 Morris Minor. What a great scene that is. I do like that wall as well. <laughs> and to round out this particular collection of Morris car photos, this EPK 935, some of you may remember, is the car that I owned until a couple of years ago. There are videos on the channel which feature this Morris 8 as we got it going. It had been stored, parked up for quite a long time. And uh, I think it's with someone else now. But yeah, that was a great little Morris. So check out the videos on that if you like your Morris 8. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, a great collection of Morris photographs. Thanks to everyone who sent photographs in. If you've got any old photographs that you think might be suitable for some of these collections, whether pre-war or even into the 1970s, please think about So if you're able to scan them, it'd be great to see them and share them in future uploads. So thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe all that kind of thing, and there'll be many, many more videos along very, very soon. So bye for now.